So I'll share with you seven lessons I've learned after more than 10 years of trading to be specific 11 years. The first lesson I've learned the hard way is you gotta make sure that you are emotionally stable before you make the trade. Because when you're angry because your wife threw away your goldfish and then you go and make a trade and it's going to cause you to do a lot of stupid things. Studies have shown that when you're sad, you tend to buy more things and buy things you don't need. So when you replace shopping with trading, you're gonna buy currencies, buy stocks that you don't need. If you're feeling angry, sad on some days, which I do sometimes, then you avoid trading for that day or for half of the day. Second lesson I've learned the hard way is staring at the charts all day. Every day, it's actually counterproductive. A lot of people have this impression that you should be sitting in front of the charts all the time or most of the time. I've done some vlogs where I only show a couple of scenes where I'm looking at the charts. And then there are people who are like, she do so many other things except for trading. First thing first, there were a couple of scenes where I was trading. Second thing is, why would you feel that I should be trading all the time? A lot of people think that the more screen time you put in, the more profitable you become. What I realized is that the less I look at the charts, the less I'll do stupid things, the better trades I'll make. Because if I tell myself, okay, today you can only have one hour of screen time, I would want to make the most out of this one hour and only make the best trades. You know what I'm saying? So I shifted to the higher time frame so that I don't need to monitor that often because if you are a day trader scalper, then probably you need to put in more screen time to monitor the charts, monitor your positions. You know what I'm saying? Third thing I've learned is, again I learned this the hard way, being a defensive trader will help you become profitable, will help you to last long. Whereas if you are an aggressive trader, like you stupid market, I'm gonna make sure I beat you. It's gonna make you fast returns in the short term, but it's not going to make you last long. So when you're an aggressive trader, you will blow your account fast. But if you're a defensive trader, you will last long. The important thing is don't compare yourself to other traders if you're a defensive trader because when you're a defensive trader, you are focusing entirely, okay not entirely, but most of your attention is focused on how can I protect my capital, protect my profits. And this is how professional traders think. So if your thinking is that way, chances are your returns for one month, one week will be less than the aggressive trader. So don't go on Instagram, TikTok and then be like, why am I making 10% per month and this random trader is making 100% per month. Successful traders last long. Successful traders are not those people who can flip account and generate 100% high returns in the short term. I've seen a lot of traders, okay, this is also my mistake. Go an account fast, a small account fast for maybe two to three weeks, one, one month. Then on the second, third month, you check on them, they blow their accounts. When you chase fast profits, you are going to go broke fast. Okay, then this comes to my fourth point, which is opening less trades will actually make you more profitable than opening a lot of trades and over trading. You know what I'm saying? Like if I tell you like today I'm opening like one trade a week as compared to another trader, she is opening 100 trades a week. If you ask a beginner who do you think is going to be more profitable, they are probably going to say the trader who opens 100 trades a week. I've done this at one point, opened tons of trades in one day, like 20 trades, over leveraging, over exposing my portfolio to a lot of risk. In the end, I just blow my account. You know what I'm saying? Then when I shifted to a longer term trading, then trading less, my trading became less stressful, but also became more profitable. And I get to have a life. If you're not trading for two or three days, then find something trading related to do. For example, like reading trading books, watching trading documentaries, movies, joining a trading club, and then go for a meeting. And being in a community also motivates you a lot. Fifth lesson is, this is easier said than done. Don't buy a market just because you're scared of missing out. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I put in 
$1,000 into the crypto market. Not everything, but $1,000 into the crypto market just because I was scared that I would miss out because I saw all these influencers, how I got rich from crypto. Like it's human nature, human nature to feel greedy sometimes. So every time when you feel greedy, ask yourself this question. Is this based on my trading plan or is it based on greed? And it's sad, you know, because studies have proven that people, most people who bought the crypto market and also the meme stocks, they don't know what they are buying into. They just bought into the fact that other people are making good money from it, becoming rich from it. So let me just buy that. This led to people losing their life savings. You know, the cost of ignorance is very big. Okay, I know a lot of people say, all these trading gurus are charging $2,000, $3,000. But if you think about it, what is two, three thousand dollars as compared to you putting in 10k, not knowing anything, and then losing everything? And number six, okay, this is like a big thing. The moment you become overconfident, like, oh shoot, I'm a big shot. The moment you feel that way, you catch yourself feeling that way, you gotta be careful because the next moment that comes, not to curse you or anything, the next few moments that comes is a big loss. Have a healthy level of confidence. Don't be too scared, too timid, but also don't be too overconfident. In fact, I feel like overconfidence kills more accounts than being scared. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're scared, you're just like, I don't want to trade today. It's fine. No money's on the line. But when you are feeling like, I am Yacht Soros, then you blow your account, then you lose your grandmother's life savings, then it's going to be a sad ending. I had a banking and finance degree, okay, but then I am planning to take more trading certifications just to improve myself as a trader. I'm not saying that you need to take certificates to improve as a trader because a lot of things in school are theoretical, okay, but what I'm doing is that I'm training myself to not become complacent. Even though some of these exams are not cheap, but I'm still gonna sign up for it because I want to challenge myself. So the final lesson is discipline is everything. You know you can have a subpar strategy, mediocre strategy, but when you have strong discipline, strong training psychology, strong risk management, you can still make money consistently. And on the other hand, you can have the perfect strategy in the world, but if your discipline is not there, your risk management is not there, you're still gonna lose money. Nowadays, there are trading flaws, banks who hire athletes. Some of them don't even have a finance degree, but they are hired because athletes have strong discipline and they are not scared to work hard. So you can hone your discipline in a lot of ways. One of them is to have a proper trading plan. Personally, what really helped me was because back in high school, college, university, I was a competitive swimmer. I'm not the best because I lose more than I win. Okay, my win rate sucks. But the training part the part where I have to train for swimming, like I don't feel like going to training, but I have to go. I don't feel like doing this, but I have to do it. You know, that is how my discipline is home. I'm not born with discipline. If you're somebody like me who is not born with any discipline, you know what I'm saying? Just get into sports, it helps a lot. Like if you're not a sports person back in school, sign up for a marathon, train for it. It helps you de-stress, helps you with your mental health, physical health. But of course, these are not the only lessons that I've learned. There are a lot more. So I want to share with you 10 more lessons I've learned. You can check it out here. So with that, talk to you in the next video. Bye.